Have you ever wondered how to raise money and why it's easier for some organizations and harder for others and easier for some business people and harder for others? Well, there are some actual psychological principles that go behind why people give or even support a particular business and that is what we are going to talk about today. How to raise money based on actual psychology. Hey, welcome back. My name is Amber Melanie Smith and I am a nonprofit founder, executive director, social impact entrepreneur, lover of all things social change, and here to make videos to help aspiring change makers with tips and strategies to help you make an impact while living a life of impact. Wait, I said that twice. Purpose, impact, all of it's good. Can never have too much of it. Moving on. So I am a little bit behind on my YouTube videos and I'm sorry about that to folks who are following along, but it has been the busiest couple of weeks of maybe my entire life. My organization is kicking off a campaign to do something we've never done before and that is to raise funds to launch an actual building. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about that journey and all of the struggles and triumphs that will inevitably come along with it, let me know in the comments below and I will contemplate making a video on that topic a little bit later. Today I want to talk about something that's really fun and I think interesting and that is how to raise money based on actual psychology. There's a lot of really interesting research on the psychology of volunteering and giving and why people are altruistic and help good causes and uh, I've been reading some great stuff on that and have, have compiled a lot of research on the topic that I'm going to share with you in this video as well. So before I get into that fascinating psychological exploration, I just want to say I hope this video helps you out whether you are fundraising for a nonprofit or a charity that you care about on some of these uh, principles can apply to business as well that I hope that this video is helpful to you and please don't forget to subscribe and help me grow this channel so that I can get the word out about how to make an impact and what we can learn along the way to more and more people all right so the research is broken down into five parts in this video and I'm gonna start with part number one how to raise money based on actual psychology part number one is Basically, you have to cultivate positive thoughts and a positive environment before you ask for money. So here's what's really interesting about this. So if you've ever seen a video where you've got like the sad puppy or children who look really distressed, those videos are using guilt and negative tactics to raise money, but they're actually not as effective as the videos that focus on the positive. So when you are trying to raise money, whether through or for your charity or for business, you wanna focus on the positive first. What could the money accomplish? What good can it do versus what bad is gonna happen if you don't participate and give your funds? According to some kind of old research, this one's from 1972, happier people give more money. So you want to create an experience that makes people happy before you ask them for money. Things like hearing an inspirational talk or being given a compliment or um, having someone be kind to you or having a cute experience with puppies. Happier people are more likely to give you their money. Kind of along the same lines, uh, there was a great study in 2004 that found that doing an act of kindness can actually make you feel happier for weeks, weeks after that. So inviting people to participate in kindness, kind acts to each other can also have that effect of making them happy and thus making them more likely to support your cause or business financially. Here's another interesting one. You can create more happiness and higher levels of happiness by combining diverse and different experiences together versus giving someone the same positive experience more than once back to back. So what I mean by this is is you want to combine different things that make people happy, such as letting them participate in a fun social event and giving them cookies. Two different experiences back to back uh, would be different from giving them cookies and then giving them cookies again. So how this relates to raising money for a cause is you want to allow people to have a couple of positive experiences back to back that are different. So 
letting them have a fun social ex experience, um, inviting them to a party, maybe giving them a gift, not a practical gift. You want to focus on gifts that just are for fun and pleasure. And then giving them an opportunity to donate or volunteer because those things also can lead to happiness. Also on the idea that happiness leads to more don donations. If you want to increase the size of a donation or a purchase, you want to focus on how much more that that person can feel happy by increasing their donation or purchase. So the difference between a donation at this amount and the donation at that amount and equating that to an additional pleasurable experience. For example, showcasing how an exponentially larger impact could be made with a larger donation. So really emphasizing that impact because that's what's going to cause those feelings of happiness through their generosity. Okay, so raising money using psychology rule number two you want to make your impact visible and or put a face on the impact so we've all seen this before you know a video of someone giving to a person experiencing homelessness that's on YouTube and the person who's homeless they tell their story and everyone um, loves this person and then they want to support that specific person so uh, GoFundMe is started and thousands of dollars roll in. Well why is that? You know we've got thousands and thousands of people experiencing homelessness. Why does everyone want to put their support behind this one specific person? Well we've heard this before in the fundraising world but it's because it's a lot easier to feel like you're making an impact when you think you're supporting an identifiable person whose story you understand who has put a face on the cause than some more obscure cause and the abstract idea that you're helping thousands of people through your donation. So if you're working with a cause and maybe it's not appropriate to share a person's photo or story or video at least come up with an example story, you know, something that helps put a human face on the issue that will help you increase your donations. One organization that does this extremely well is Kiva, that's K-I-V-A.org. They allow you to make micro loans to specific individuals or families in developing worlds to help them grow their business so they can lift themselves out of poverty. So you've got a really compelling story cause and can give to a specific person as opposed to the overall cause, which feels pretty good. This is also why fundraising for physical tangible things like food to feed people or even a building might be easier than raising money for a cause overall that's maybe a little bit more intangible or abstract. In today's world, especially where there might be a lower trust of the charitable sector, it's really important to show people how their dollars are making an impact. So anytime you can show them the tangible thing or allow them to touch the building that they're funding, you know, all that stuff is going to help you raise money. All right, raising money based on psychology, rule number three. Invite people to volunteer and give their time, even if they say no before asking them to donate their money. So I find this one really interesting because I know that logically time is something you can never ever get back in your whole life, whereas money you could possibly make that back if you give it away. But human beings are rarely rational, especially when it comes to giving practices. They're more likely to make a donation based on emotion. And the, the research shows that asking people to give their time versus their money is easier because it's harder to uh, quantify and, and understand you know, the return on investment of giving your time. It's a lot more vague. Whereas if I give someone $5, I'm expecting some impact worth $5 to be made somehow down the line. On top of that, volunteering makes people happy. It increases their sense of meaning and belonging. It helps them get to know your cause a lot better. And we know that people are more likely to donate money or give their money when they also are more familiar with the cause and the people behind the cause. There's a lot more trust established than when you're trying to cold call for a donation. So if you're trying to build a base of donors, a really great strategy would be to ask them and invite them to volunteer for your organization first. Even if they say no, the research shows that people who are asked to volunteer first are more likely to give their money to your cause later. Rule number four, 
You want to reward people who give your cause or business money through acts of appreciation. And I mean acts of appreciation instead of big incentives or transactional trade-offs. Now this one obviously applies more to charitable giving than giving your money or purchasing something from a for-profit business because of the giving psychology here, but if you are going to appreciate or reward a donor, you want to make sure that you're doing it with something small that isn't worth an extremely large amount of money and that focuses purely on the act of appreciating them. So a simple thank you card or a small token of your appreciation like a cool coffee mug or something is a great way of just expressing that gratitude. And the reason behind this is really interesting. It's when a donor feels overcompensated, they don't get the good feelings that they would normally get from making a significant contribution to your cause. Instead, they feel like they bought something which doesn't quite feel as good. So you want to make sure that, like I said, low value, small, just about pure, authentic gratitude for their support. This is all about a cool word I learned recently called eudaimonia, which is that giving makes people happy. It activates your brain's pleasure centers. So give your donors eudaimonia. And another part of this rewarding donors and supporters is giving them the opportunity to maximize what they perceive as the value of supporting your cause. People do this with money in terms of their financial success all the time. It's, it's considering the return on your investment. So they do this for charity too. It's people want to know that whenever they're gonna give their time or their money that they're going to get what they perceive as something of greater value. A really, really great feeling, not knowing that you made an impact in some kind of big way. All of these things are really important even when it comes to making donations for a cause too. So along the same line, anytime you can give a donor an opportunity to increase the value of their impact, it's great. So that's why matching donations can be a really successful strategy. If you are going to do a fundraising campaign, see if someone will match the donations because people are far more likely to give when they know that when they give $5, someone else is going to give $5 and so the value of their own investment is actually $10. That's very compelling to a donor, especially if there's a sense of timeliness or urgency to it when they know that the matching donations have to be made by a certain date or time because that will compel them to act more quickly. Along these same lines, um, giving follows a sort of law of diminishing returns Returns, which means that if someone gives uh, some amount, then giving a little bit more doesn't necessarily make them feel any better without another compelling reason, kind of how we talked about before. So one psychological strategy that a lot of fundraisers use is to ask for multiple small or medium-sized donations throughout the course of a, a year or several months, as opposed to one big donation, because then every time they make that small or medium-sized donation, they feel great. Great. Whereas if they give one big donation, they feel good in the moment, but then won't feel good if you ask them again necessarily for another similar donation down the line. But if you ask them to give an, an amount that will add up to that larger donation over the course of a year, then they get to feel good 12 times if it's a monthly donation instead of just once. And you want to be able to reward your donors and make them feel good about giving to you as often as possible to keep them around. And the fifth and final rule of using psychology to raise money is social proof, aka copying what others around you are doing. What this basically boils down to is people might be more likely to donate to your cause when they see that lots of other people are donating to your cause might feel a little backwards. You might think to yourself, well, if they know that everyone else is donating, maybe they will think that they're not needed. That's actually the opposite. What happens is people see that others are donating and they want to be a part of that. They want to participate also. Uh, a great way to actually implement this strategy in real life is to put something on your website like, join 352 other people in donating to this cause this month. Then they're seeing that, wow, 352 other people are participating in this. Maybe I should be a part of that. So just a little bit of language about how many other supporters you have who are involved, who care about your cause, might compel someone to join in on the movement. If you're raising money in person, there was a super cool experiment done with a donation box. First, you wanna make sure that you have like a clear donation box so that people can see the money inside because that's part of this experiment, seeing the money inside. 
Basically, when the researchers put a sign on the donation box that said someone is matching all donations that go into that box, the donations increased. And they increased by about 34%, so not a small increase. And the second part of this, and why it's important to have a clear donation box, is you want to put the type of dollar that you are hoping people will give in the donation box, obviously without, within reason. So um, if you put a bunch of $1 bills in your donation box, people will think that is the socially acceptable amount to give and they will give the same amount. If you put fives or tens or twenties in the donation box, then others will see that that is the socially acceptable amount to give and they will be more likely to give a similar amount as well. Okay, so that's all I got. Those are five rules for how to use psychology to raise money for your charitable efforts or business as well. Like I said, a lot of these strategies can apply to business practices as well. In summary, it's all about making your cause compelling, putting a personal face on it, showing that others are in support of it too, using that social proof and rewarding people who participate in ways that make them feel really great. Once again, my name is Amber Melanie Smith, and I'm a nonprofit professional who makes these videos here on YouTube to help aspiring change makers to live a life of impact and purpose. Just one impact and purpose that time. I really hope that this video helped you out. Please don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends. One more final comment, if you are on Facebook, don't forget to check out my group, Change the World or Bust. Myself and other change makers are in that group having conversations about how to make an impact in the world and seeing how we can help each other out because changing the world is not easy, I will tell you. Hope to see you next time, bye.